welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you are here with me this morning. If you have never been here before, my name is Rosalind Yukich and I am a Jesus loving homeschool mom who lives in Croatia and I do keto. And today we are doing another Bible journaling with me video in the book of Ephesians. Now, this is a free study that I am doing. Um, you can find all of the written material for the study on my blog. You'll find that link in the description box below. And you will also find a link to the playlist um, where you can uh, watch all of the previous Bible journaling with me videos for the book of Ephesians. Today we are going to be looking at Ephesians 4 and we're going to do something a little different today. I've not done this with my Bible journaling videos. We are looking at Ephesians 4 verses 29 and 31. So we are not looking at two consecutive verses. We are looking at two separate verses in the same chapter. So Ephesians 29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and uh, for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And then 31, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now I chose these verses because this is something that we see so often in today's society this corrupt speech, this um, evil speaking, and I think um, more and more we are seeing it as uh, we just grow more and more frustrated with the way that things are going in, uh, in society, in politics. You know, and Jesus did say that in the last days that uh, the love of many would grow cold, and I believe that this is evident in the way that we speak to one another and the way that we speak to one another and the words that we use in um, what we hold in our heart, that bitterness, that wrath, that anger, all of that is, is uh, speaks to um, this, just this corruptness that is filling the heart of so many people today. And as believers, we need to walk differently. We need to um, we need to show that we live in a different way, that we do not allow that level of, of evil and hatred in our heart. And so um, Paul is speaking this to the church. He is not speaking to the world. He's speaking to the church. And he is giving them a warning that, um, a, that they need to watch what they allow to reside in their heart. You know, uh, if you followed my blog for very long, you know that I often quote my father and one of the things that he has said many times in his sermons is the amount of light that you allow in that you have in your heart is in direct proportion to the amount of darkness that you allow to reside there. And so if we want our lives to be filled with God's light if we want the Holy Spirit to be living and working and moving in our life, if we want to walk in joy and peace and tranquility, and uh, if we want to, uh, if we want to have that that happiness in our life, we have to uh, first ask ourselves how much darkness. Are we allowing to reside in our heart? How much darkness are we allowing in our entertainment every day? How much bitterness are we allowing in our heart? Um, you know, are we walking in forgiveness every single day towards those who have hurt and offended us? And these questions will help to uncover maybe those areas that we have sort of. Um, ignored in a way. And so as you see, I just divided my page into three sections. In this upper section, I'm going to write out the verse, then I'm going to highlight the keywords that I see in this 
right hand section here. I'm going to write those keywords out and then in this larger left hand section, I am going to rewrite the verse out in my own words uh, uh, using the what I have learned from these keywords. Now when we write out these keywords, we are going to go to the Strong's Concordance and see what those words mean in the Greek because that very often helps us to gain a broader understanding of what this verse is saying. So let's go ahead and get started writing out this verse. Okay, so we have these two verses written out. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So that right here we see what our purpose is for speaking. When we speak, our speech should impart grace to those who hear us as children of God we need to watch out for this um, our the purpose for our words is to impart grace that same grace that God has given to us and so we need to be careful of what is coming out of our mouth um, David said that he put a guard over his mouth when he was in the company of the wicked. Um, a watchman, it literally meant like a watchman over his mouth. How do we do this? Now, I just want to take a moment and say that um, I know there are believers who um, grew up in homes uh, where, you know, uh, evil speaking we can include in that, um, you know, profanity was used on a regular basis. And that is just something that they struggle with because that is, you know, that's been ingrained in them from childhood and they got saved later on in life. And they're still in the process of the Holy Spirit doing that cleansing work in their heart. Um, but when a word slips out of their mouth, that they take that moment to ask the Lord to forgive them and to repent from that. And um, we are all in a in the process of being sanctified. Sanctification is a process. It's not a one-time event. And so we're all in that process. You know, for some, that may be their struggle. For, for others of us, we have different areas of struggle. We all have areas in our life that are continually being sanctified. And so um, that is... This is, this is a process. Um, we are all on a journey. None of us have arrived. And so um, this is not to bring condemnation to those of you who, for whom this is an area of struggle. Um, just as any other command in Scripture is not there to bring condemnation. You know, in Romans it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And so... We are all in the process of that sanctification, but understanding that because this is a command, this is an area where we, if this is a struggle for us, we need to be on guard. We can't just allow our past to become an excuse for us to walk in carnality. Um, you know, there are those I have seen, um, you know, in blog posts and um, in other uh, written medium, there are those Christians who honestly believe that this is not really an issue, that, you know, profanity in the life of a Christian is a non-issue, that um, even at times it can be used as, you know, to bring emphasis to what they are trying to say. And that is concerning because this is a command in Scripture that no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. It is a command. 
but what is good for necessary edification, the purpose for which we are speaking, that it may impart grace to the hearers, that there's that purpose, necessary edification and impartation of grace. And then he says another command, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. When these things reside in our heart, evil speaking will come out of our mouth. Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when there is corruption there in our heart, corruption will come out of our mouth. Now we're going to take a moment and we are going to highlight these key words that we find in this verse. Corrupt word. Proceed, edification, impart, grace, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, put away. I want to look at this. I have a note actually that I wrote in my Bible in connection with put away. We will look at that. And malice. So there are there's a lot here that we are going to be looking at today. So now we're going to take a moment and we're going to write these words in this column, leaving space in between the words so that we can take notes on what we learn from the Strong's Concordance. I'm going to use these as on two lines. Now, I don't know if in the Strong's uh, this will be one word, like a two-word phrase, or If they're going to be separate words, we will see. Okay, now that we have our words here, we are going to go over to the Strong's Concordance and see what these words mean in the Greek starting with the words corrupt word and they are separate so we're going to be looking at these words separately corrupt means rotten putrefied unfit for use worthless and word in in the greek well it's The Strong's Concordance uses the King James Version of the Bible. I read out of the New King James. It's it's easier for me. Um, But in the King James, it uses the word communication, which I think is so descriptive because a word is, uh, it's almost one-dimensional. And the word communication really is more multidimensional because it is, it indicates um, uh, not just empty, not just speaking, but speaking with someone. It's it's a little bit m- more descriptive, uh, and so we have dis- discourse, uh, the act of speaking, speech. Um, there's a lot here, um, but you know, obviously, with this being, uh, there's a lot of different contexts in which you can use this word communication but in general um it comes back to you know di- the, you know discourse or speech so you know let no rotten or worthless speech unfit for use uh proceed to go forth depart flow to spread abroad of a rumor we're going to look at edification building up the act of one who promotes another's growth in christian wisdom piety happiness and holiness promoting christian growth impart grace and this again is these are two separate words so to give grant deliver and grace which is in the greek charis merciful kindness there's a a phrase here um, that is just so beautiful exerting his holy influence on souls turns them to christ keeps strengthens increases them in christian faith knowledge affection and kindles them to the exercise of christian virtues it's such a beautiful phrase um and it's such a, a 
beautiful, beautiful description of what it means to walk in grace. Good will and favor, giving to others the same merciful kindness that we have been given by God. Okay, so let's, before we move on to the next verse, let's let's just briefly look over this one that we have we have looked at here. So let no rotten, putrefied, worthless discourse or speech unfit for use depart, go forth or flow from your mouth, spreading abroad a rumor. And I do want to really put emphasis on that because I think sometimes when we think of corrupt speech and even in my intro to this, uh, you know, to this verse, I was more, more focusing on, you know, the evil things that we say, but here we could even say, you know, that is gossip rumor, um, you know, spreading stories about other people, um, that we're not allowed, we're not to allow that to proceed to flow from our mouth. And I love that word flow because, you know, so often, uh, we we have encountered that, or even ourselves have engaged in that, and just allowing stuff to just flow from our mouth. Um, uh, but what is good for the necessary building up or promoting Christian growth, um, that it may um, grant, give, deliver that merciful kindness, goodwill, and favor to the hearers. Okay, now moving on to verse 31, bitterness, extreme wickedness. That is a very strong word. You know, when we think about bitterness, you know, we've all been bitter at one time or another, uh, more, you know, more than likely. And the Bible says that's extreme wickedness, a bitter root, so producing bitter fruit. That's really interesting, actually. Bitterness produces a bitter root that will then produce bitter fruit. Bitterness, wrath, passion, anger, indignation. And then we have anger here. This is the natural, this is like a temper, violent emotion. And also we have indignation as well. Clamor. Now that's not a word that we really use much anymore. An outcry. So this would be like yelling we could say. I think we're all starting to feel a little bit convicted at the moment. Uh, Evil speaking. So this is slander, injurious speech, going back up here to proceed, you know, to spread, to spread a rumor. Evil speaking. So in, in general, this is, you know, blasphemy, um, railing. So really this is more in the evil speaking it more in context of how we speak about others. Be put away. This is to take off, remove, carry away. Now, I mentioned that for this, I had actually written a note in my Bible, and I don't know where I uh, got this note from. Um, I've done a study already, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I've done a study already in the book of Ephesians, and you can find that written material on my blog again, like I said in the intro of this video, in the description box below. So I have already done a very detailed study through the book of Ephesians, um, and I used many different sources when, um, you know, I, when I do in-depth Bible study, I always read first, take my own notes read carefully, do a lot of circling and highlighting and writing in my Bible. And then I will go back through it again, but the second time using um, different resources and commentaries, and I will take notes from what they have said. Um, Most often I try to, even in my Bible, to write where I, you know, found that thought. Um, but sometimes not, and um, so I'm not sure where where I, I got this note from, but it says, once and for all act, not, uh, not continuous. So meaning that this putting away 
um, is something that's a once and for all thing that we, when we put this away, it's, it's very much like repentance where, you know, we put these things away from us and we turn around and walk away. Now, does that mean that we aren't going to have a weak moment in our life and fall into temptation? Um, no, you know, that, that happens, but it should not it, it shouldn't be something that we, um, you know, that we allow, give ourselves room for. And so this is an act of putting it away and, you know, putting it off of us and then walking away. All right. So malice. This is ill will or desire to injure depravity. Okay. So now we get an idea for what uh, the second verse is saying. He says, let all extreme wickedness, passion, anger, indignation, violent emotion, and temper, uh, outcry, yelling, slander, and injurious speech uh, be taken off to be removed and carried away with from you with all ill will, desire to injure, and depravity. We are to live differently than the world. In the body of Christ, there was sort of this understanding that there were certain things that Christians just did not do. Now, granted, in some circles, that led to a lot of legalism and more lists of rules of what we did not do that came along with, you know, some, with a measure of self-righteousness. The roots of that, I believe, were were genuine where you know there was this genuine desire that there be that that as Christians we walk differently than the world walks um, that there be this separation of there's worldly behavior and then there's Christian behavior there are worldly activities and there there are activities that Christians simply do not engage in and we've seen that that uh, boundary line erode with time. But as we began to see that boundary line erode, we began to see that the, the church behaved more and more like the world until we come to today where there's very little to distinguish the church from the world. And, um, and there's nothing more telling than what comes out of our mouth. Because as Jesus said, out, you know, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is coming out of our, out of our mouth reflects what is residing in our heart. And so this really isn't dealing so much with just speech, you know, because our communication is only a symptom of a deeper, much deeper issue. And so, you know, we know that when we go to the doctor, the doctor shouldn't only be treating the symptom, the doctor should be treating the disease. Um, and if we if only we only ever treat the symptom and we allow the disease to remain, uh, that disease is going to manifest itself in other ways. And so we need to we need to address the symptom. It's a the symptom is the heart. It's a heart issue that needs to be dealt with. Why do we have corrupt speech and bitterness and anger and malice and clamor and e evil speaking? Why do we have these things? coming out of our mouth is because those things are allowed to reside in our heart. These are heart issues. So given what we have learned here, now we are going to rewrite this verse out in our own words. almost ran out of room here. Uh, we have let no rotten, worthless speech or communication unfit for use go forth or flow from your mouth, spreading of rumors. But what is good for necessary building up and promoting of Christian growth, that it may give del and deliver merciful kindness in God's favor to the hearers. Let all extreme wickedness 
passionate anger, temper, and violent indignation, yelling, slander, and injurious speech be taken off, removed, and carried away from you with all ill will, desire to injure, depravity. This is so important in our world today at a time when it is so common to see this kind of behavior, both in the church and in the world, that we allow the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out, doing what it says in Romans, renewing our mind so that we are, so that what is, uh, what is coming out of our mind is reflective of what is, uh, of God's work in our hearts, God's sanctifying work in our hearts. This is so important for us today. I hope and pray that um, today's Bible journaling video um, was uh, an encouragement to you to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to do His work, His transforming work in your heart and in your life so that that transformation, it reflects in how we speak and interact with one another. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment below letting me know how this Bible journaling video spoke to you today. And I will see you in the next video.